In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Wish all of you a many graces and blessings on this great feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is her birthday, September the 8th. So uh, we celebrate, many of you celebrate birthdays, but what must be in heaven, the incredible joy, the incredible solemnity and singing and laughter in the celebration of the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is, compared to all creation, all the galaxies, all the planets, all the animal kingdom, and all the plant kingdom, and everything created, compared to her, it's just like dust. God's most beautiful creation is His mother. And His mother would be, why was she made? Why, what was her whole reason for existence? It's because of her greatest title. The greatest title for Our Lady is Mother of God. Theotokos, Mother of God. And the Virgin Mary, she was destined, she was chosen, she was foretold. Everything about her is to be Mother of God. So when our first parents fell in the Garden of Gethsemane, excuse me, in the Garden of Eden, uh, when they fell, our first parents, disobeying God, God promised that He would send a woman and that she will crush the serpent's head. And that role of Our Lady was, was accomplished when she was at the very moment of her conception. When her parents, St. Joachim and St. Anne, who could not have children for many years, and they suffered a lot because of it. They thought, many people thought they were cursed by God, and they must be great sinners because they had no children. And that was a great cross for them. And St. Anne wept very much because of this. And St. Joachim was even kicked out of the temple by some of the proud Pharisees. And he went to the hills to weep before God. But an angel consoled him and said, don't worry, because God is going to hear your prayer. And St. Anne did conceive. And at the moment of, of the conception, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ blocked the passing down of original sin. Original sin is normally passed down to the man, because it's the man, Adam, that fell. It was, if it was just Eve that fell, it wouldn't affect the whole human race, says St. Thomas Aquinas. But because the head of the human race fell, the whole human race was plunged into sin. So all of us are born with the devil's chains around our soul, black. But only one, only one was not, and that was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she is so dear to God. She is the most precious gem she is the most beautiful garden. She is the sweetest cinnamon. She's the rose, the most beautiful rose of all fields, the rose of Sharon, says the Holy Ghost. She's the dove, and the dove mourns. If you ever hear the mourning doves, they sound like they're kind of mourning, they're kind of sad. And it always reflects the Virgin Mary. The Holy Ghost speaks of Mary as the dove mourning for the great sorrows of her sons, the seven great sorrows of, her, of our Lord's life. So the Virgin Mary is given all these titles and many more in the scriptures because God, it's as if He can't, he can't praise her enough. And St. Bernard even said that, De Maria numquam satis. About Mary, we can never say enough. So, does that mean I'm going to go on with a six-hour sermon? No, because we've got two more Masses. <laughs> but, uh, just to say about Mary, we can't say enough. So I should just stop right there. And just we should just honor and salute her. But listen to these great words of St. Bernardine of Siena, praising the Virgin Mary. 
He says this, Let Mary never be far from your lips and from your heart. Following her, you will never lose your way. Praying to her, you will never sink into despair. Contemplating her, you will never go wrong. And as one uh, Carthusian monk, I think it was, a Carthusian holy monk, I don't remember his name, but he said, in this life God puts us through many storms. And the way to be guided through it is hold the Virgin Mary's hand. Because sometimes in the storms you just can't see. I don't know about here in England, I'm sure you get some heavy rainstorms. But in the United States, during winter, we get these massive blizzards, where I'm from, and in upstate New York. So you'll be driving along, and the, the, the snow will just get so thick, you cannot see the front of the car. And it can get so thick, you can't even see the road. The only thing that guides you to stay on the road is the, the little indent indentations or the trees. Or the, or the telephone pole. It's very dangerous to drive in the blizzard. But in the storms, you just can't see. And on the ocean, I just think of it every time. I, 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 and I'm sure Father Pfeiffer does too, and many priests. You know, it's, it's, only, it's, three, it's going on four in the morning right now in Kentucky. And I just flew here in seven hours. It was a seven-hour flight from Chicago to London. When for our ancestors and all the people who sailed to the United States from England, it took them weeks, sometimes months, to travel that. Here I am automatically here. So how many ships going from England to the United States sunk in massive storms, huge storms on the Atlantic Ocean, and the people were praying, and, and uh, they flipped, and many of them just drowned. Many, many, many ships. So, the, this life on earth, God permits many storms. And firstly, we have to expect that, because if He would treat His mother and St. Joseph, they will go through many storms in their life, many storms, heavy crosses. And there, there's a great devotion to the seven sorrows of the Virgin Mary. There's also a great devotion to the seven sorrows of St. Joseph. Did you know that? It's the seven sorrows of St. Joseph. And so God treats his friends sometimes pretty rough. And when we're in the storm and you can't see clearly, hold the hand of the Virgin Mary. Hold her hand. And how do we do it? Pray her rosary. Wear her scapular. It's really simple. And then we got to really love her like a mother. Like our own mother. All of, every, every man cannot but love his mother. There's something wrong if someone hates his mother. But even if they have a bad mother, let's say, we always have a mother in heaven. And the Blessed Virgin Mary is powerful. And she is the one which we have to turn to, especially in this crisis of the church. It's more than a crisis. It's a real apostasy. It's shaking the foundations of the, the whole church. And with this whole new rise of scandals that, are, that have risen up in the past two weeks, uh, many are just losing, they're just walking away from the, the church, or the conciliar church, which is good to do, but they're losing all faith. So how long is God going to permit this shaking and punishment on us? It's for our sins. And as the Holy Ghost says, God punishes, the worst punishments are through bad leaders. Through bad leaders. So we're suffering very much through bad political leaders, and especially bad leaders in the church. And even in tradition, we turn to the four bishops consecrated by Archbishop Lefebvre, and, and they're not doing their duty. As St. John Fisher said, 
when he himself was surprised, why are there so few bishops standing with me to oppose this apostasy of England to separate from the Catholic Church by putting the king, a secular ruler, as head of the church? And, he, and that was the one point him and St. Thomas More could not compromise on, nor on approving an invalid marriage and a divorce. They couldn't approve that. So it was on matters of the faith. So they should not have been alone. Certainly not St. John Fisher. There should have been the majority of bishops. But it's, it turns out only one bishop. And these were the good old days with good popes. Now we have bad popes since Vatican II and a lot of bad bishops. But at least the four bishops consecrated by Archbishop Lefebvre should have stood strong in this this uh, Vatican II Part II, Vatican II Part B. So we're even turning to them and they're, they, they, we ask for bread and they give stones. We ask for an egg and they give a scorpion. So why is this happening? I don't know. But it's certainly the first thing we should point to is, is ourselves. Maybe it's my sins that have incurred this partly at least as punishment on the church and on the whole world because the whole world suffers darkness because of the apostasy or at least the compromise of the faith at the leadership so but what do we do in this storm keep holding the hand of the Virgin Mary keep your eyes towards her the sailors always called her the morning star because the sailors would always read where they are by direction, since they didn't have GPS in those days, they would read the stars. And the morning star would be their, their light, their guide, their direction. And that's what the Virgin Mary's called. She's, she's everything for us. And in the litany, she's called the cause of our joy. The cause of our joy. The greatest happiness is to know that the love of God by His crucifixion and death, by His continuing to pour out that divine love in the sacrifice of the Mass, that He really forgives our sins. That was G.K. Chesterton. He was asked, um, so what made you become a Catholic? He said, to know I could have my sins forgiven. That's what he said. And that's a great joy to know that. To know that I can offend God through my stupidity, weakness, or even horrible malice, but yet if I'm truly sorry and confess them, God will forgive. And that gives a great peace to the soul, great joy to the soul. And we should never ever despair of God's mercy and uh, the, the love of God. So in these terrible days, in these terrible storms that where the church is going through, and we all suffer because we love Mother Church. We love our Holy Father, the Pope. We have to pray for this one. He's a bad one. He's a scandal. But we still love our Holy Father, the Pope. We love the papacy because it's instituted by Christ. He's our father. And we have a bad father right now and bad bishops. And the whole attacks of the enemies, the Freemasons and the Judeo-Masons and the the, the communists and the enemies of Christ and the worst, the liberal Catholics, the so-called conservatives, the church is just being bombarded at every level. So we must rise up. You must rise up and pick up the weapons Our Lady gave us. The rosary, the scapular, the love of the true mass. And she saw the days, she told St. Dominic, one day through the rosary and the scapular, I will save the world because she foresaw that there will come the day when you can't just get to mass and how many how many, everywhere in the world where there was the Catholic Church in tradition people could go and visit the Blessed Sacrament and sit with our Lord for an hour or a few hours this was one of the greatest joys of Catholics for centuries and centuries to visit our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and even that's been taken away. Even that's been taken away because of the doubtful new Mass. 
and sometimes very often invalid numerals. So she saw that someday the Catholics won't have the Mass and the Blessed Sacrament so, so readily available. But you keep the faith with the Rosary and the Scapular and know the faith, love the faith, and love our Lord. So let's ask the Virgin Mary, ask her a great grace today, it's her birthday, right? And she's known for giving many great gifts on her feast days. She's known, as Mary of Agreda says, she descends into purgatory on her great feasts and releases many, many souls, especially those who wore her scapular and who honored her by the rosary. So let's all ask her some great grace today. Ask her. Ask, ask her. And ask big things of her. Ask her great things. A great love of God like the martyrs. A strong faith like the martyrs. That we would rather die uh, like St. John Fisher. And live in a freezing cold prison. And be starving to death. Which is what he went through before he was beheaded. And he was truly great, that St. John Fisher. But uh, a great model and example for all of us in the whole world. Because we're, we're quite alone, uh, numbers-wise. But that doesn't matter in God's eyes. St. John Fisher was the only loyal bishop to the Catholic faith, and he died for it. So let's ask that of Our Lady, a strong faith, a great love of God. And for you young ones, to know God's will. What does God want me to be? A priest? A monk? A nun? To be married? And if I marry, take all the children God will send me? And, and, and you got to ask Almighty God. This is the age to do it. When you're very young, start asking Him. And begging Him to know. And then uh, with all this, all the... We just got to ask great things of Our Lady. Ask her. And... Ask the Holy Ghost to show you what you need to really beg her. And she'll give it. She will always give. And uh, I'll close with those great words of St. John Hughes, who had a great love of the Virgin Mary and her Immaculate Heart, because the Protestants need to be reminded of this. And many Catholics who somehow contract that contaminating disease of Protestantism where they think you can, that the, the Virgin Mary, well, we can't overesteem her. Well, St. John Hughes says that sometimes our Lord will not answer prayers. People ask, they go directly to our Lord Jesus Christ, but He won't answer many prayers. He will only answer them through His mother, because He wants His mother honored. And that's how it is. He honors His mother. So let's honor her today. And let's kneel down with all the angels before Jesus crucified. Soon to come down in your house. Your house becomes like a Bethlehem. Becomes a Mount Calvary. Becomes really a heaven. Because the God, the King of heaven and earth comes here. So Our Lady, wherever her son is, she is also. So she will also be in this house with many saints and angels. And all around the fields for miles, they will come to adore Christ here very soon. So let's honor her on her birthday and ask her great things. And give her great thanks for all, all of her graces. Because if anyone, any of us get to heaven, which we hope for, it's going to be through her. It will always be through her. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.